Hi, this is Jim from CableSupply.com. Thank you for watching my video today. Please like it and subscribe. Very much appreciated if you would. You know, as uh, we're doing this series of DIY for um, home installations, for home networking, for you know, setting up your TV, for setting up your uh, routers and switches and wireless access points and things like that. But as I did that, I decided, you know, uh, you kind of have to have some neat ideas that they don't show you in books. And so today I thought I would show you some ideas here uh, that could actually save you some time and effort in the future and just organize what you're doing. And you see all this stuff hanging out here on the, you know, on the, uh, the, the uh, table here. I'm going to go through some of this stuff and just help you. Some, some things that I've found that have been useful uh, in putting in networks and homes and things like that. And also just, uh, you know, around the business. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about that I found useful that you may help you also is uh, you know these these power uh, little power bricks you call them or transformers whatever that you plug in and they power little different devices and all um, what I found out is sometimes I end up with a whole drawer of these things years ago I found out and I didn't know what they went to um, you know what does this go that way or or it had extra switches and and routers and I didn't know where the power supply was and I had to go through the power supply to see what in the world um, am I holding in my hand and how can I power it so since then and it's probably been about 10 years what I decided I do with with my bricks is I write on the brick what it goes to so in this case it's a net uh, neck gear uh, eight port switch also have the model number there and I know this power supply goes to this switch right here and that saves me a heck of a lot of time looking for power supplies and things like that and so when I unplug it let's say and I wrap up the cord and then I throw it right into you know right into my drawer somewhere uh, where I keep these things, I don't know. Sometimes I, I put them in a plastic Ziploc bag, both of them. So I'll put them together, I'll put a Ziploc bag, but I make sure I label everything uh, on there. Uh, there's one other thing too, of course, you, if you didn't do that and you can't figure out what in the world goes where, uh, sometimes on these things they will actually tell you the power that it needs. And I'm looking on this one, of course this one doesn't um, tell me the power that I need, so I'm really glad that I... I use the uh, the labeling there, um, but sometimes it will tell you what the power is. Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. Let me get that really close to you. I thought it would. If you notice, it has some uh, uh, the symbols on there. It tells you uh, the, the strength of the power supply. And of course, if you lose the power supply, I'm sure you can buy them. Uh, I've never bought one, but I'm sure you can. In this case, it's 12 volts, 1 amp. And if you notice, it has a little symbol there. It has a minus and it has a plus, and it shows a semi-circle there. Well, that semi-circle there is, is actually uh, a representation of the plug right here. And so that representation of that plug, uh, according to that right here, there's little, three little dots. It says the center post is the positive and the outer side, the outer side, is the negative so inside is a 12 volt this is the negative inside is the positive so it goes you know obviously right in there i think most people would know that already and so it tells you that if you lost this power supply this eight port power supply um, and if you notice here is the switch model and this is a great switch by the way i'll put the link down below for amazon if you want to buy this switch um, inexpensive switch it doesn't have a fan in it. it's not managed and uh, in another video I talk about switches routers and uh, modems and stuff like that it explains it more clearly for someone doing their own you know the D DIY home networking stuff but this is a great switch uh, neck gear and I use this often and there's smaller ports and you'll see another neck gear that I'm going to show you shortly but the bottom line is, um, these are good switches. They don't have a motor that makes a lot of noise. They don't need that type of cooling. It, they're not PoE switches and they're not managed. And uh, of course, in the other video, I'll talk about managed switches and PoEs and stuff like that. But this is a great switch and uh, power supply goes with it. So all my power supplies are, uh, are marked. 
uh, what it is. So here's another net gear, and I like these little tiny net gear uh, things, and it's uh, a five port switch net gear. That's the model number that's there. Um, you know, just a sticker, just put a sticker there. And again, there on the back of the switch talks about 12 port, one amp, positive in the center pin, uh, negative on the outside pin. It's a metal case, no fan, so it's quiet. And uh, it's a gigabit switch, as you can see. Uh, what type of switch it is, it's, it's really great. It's very inexpensive. And again, I'll, I'll just throw up the link. Uh, you can look at it on Amazon. And if you do that, I, I also get a small commission. So if you think that uh, this uh, video is valuable and you're looking for uh, some of these things, then go ahead and uh, please uh, click on the link because I think I get like a buck or something like that. I don't know how much. Less than a buck. Um, very inexpensive, these switches. This one is great. I like this because uh, as an IT guy, I can take the switch with me. I can put it in my uh, uh, truck. I can take it with me if I need a, a quick switch to attach something to temporarily. This is great. No fan. It's quiet. Things like that. Now, before I started doing those, uh, you know, looking at these, these power supplies and things like this, notice this one does not have any labels, and I have no idea where this goes or what it what it's for so now I got to hold on to it until I find out where it goes and what it does maybe I think somewhere here it should tell me uh, the the input there's the input uh, it's 24 volts so it won't work with these switches so it's not it's not net gear actually looks like a Cisco phone system switch I think that's what it is anyway useless to me it just takes up room and uh, where I keep my used equipment and things like that. So label your power supply. Now next is patch cords. One thing that you should always get is a couple extra patch cords, things like that. And I got a couple patch cords here. I got three types of patch cords. They all come in different colors. I don't you really care what the color is. I just do whatever I want. Um, this is the one I would not recommend. And if you notice in here, uh, there's there's no filling in there at all. Um, if you notice the good patch cords, um, they have that plastic that's pushed in there, so it's it's injected molding. Um, and of course, these have the strain re relief things. You never want to bend these really sharp. Uh, it has the strain relief things, things like that. The molding goes almost totally to the front, and they are great uh, little patch cords. This type is not. There's no strain relief. There's no boot. Um, when you pull these out, like say you're pulling them somewhere and they get caught on something, they tend to turn this tab like this, and then the tab itself gets broken off after a couple of times. I would not recommend this type of switch, and I, I mean patch cord, and I would not recommend this type of patch cord. The biggest problem with this type of patch cord is this bubble gets very stiff after a couple of years. And once you put it in something like a switch, it's almost impossible to get that out. And what you have to do is, bear with me here for a second, I gotta pull out some card that I have in my wallet. I hate these, these bubble boots. And so, you know, I gotta take my, my card like this and I gotta push it down and then pull out. So that's the only way I can get the thing out. You gotta push it down and then it comes out. So I don't like bubble boots. Some people do. Some people like the, uh, making their own patch cords, and that's fine. It just takes too long to make a patch cord. And unless you're doing it day in, day out, unless you need a very specific length, like if you're in a commercial building and you're, you're, you're making your own uh, patch cords to the back of servers and things like that, and you want that to be absolutely neat, I would not make my own patch cords. Too expensive, too many mistakes, too many problems uh, with it. So... These are the junk ones, as far as I'm concerned, especially these, and that's what they look like. You make your own, you're not going to be able to secure that, that wire in there. And you know, I don't know how many times I've wasted a lot of time uh, trying to troubleshoot a problem in a network, only to find out they were junk patch cords. These patch cords are fantastic, and I call them flex patch cords. Um, they really don't get stiff here. I've not seen one, but if they do, you just pull it up, and then you have plenty of room to push down, um, you know, the the uh, the tab there on the mod plug. 
Um, they're injected, molded, molded. I sell these on my website. I had someone go through a whole uh, video one time, and then they called me up, and they said they bought all these parts. And I said, great, where did you buy them from? And they said, well, you know, I got them from here and there and everything else. I said, but you watched my video, didn't you? And they said, yeah. I said, well, I'm selling them on my website. And they said, oh, I didn't know that. So... <laughs> We sell this stuff on the website, or I'll give you a link where you can buy it, okay? But these are great patch cords. Now, you always have to remember with patch cords, the length. And some people always get that length wrong. And what they actually do is they actually measure from where they, they want to start to where they want to end. And so if it's two foot from the wall to the TV, they order two foot patch cords. No, it doesn't quite work like that because patch cords don't go sometimes in a direct path especially when you're dealing with TVs on walls. They sometimes have to be, go around brackets and things like that. And, and if you've got an adjustable where you can pull that TV away from the wall, you know, to turn it or something like that, you really need, you know, to make sure you got enough patch cord. So if it measures two foot from the wall like this, stretched out completely, then you're probably going to need... Uh, something a lot longer, a minimum of three or even bigger. And you can always take the excess and this is the third idea, and use Velcro. So you Velcro up the excess. Here, I got two stuck together here. You get these little Velcro things, and they are fantastic. I use them all the time, and it's really nice because you don't want to... Uh, no, you can use zip tags if you know how to use them, but in this case with the Velcro, the nice thing about it is you can take it off. So you're done. Uh, you know, you get a bunch of your cables together, like here, you can wrap it around and now you got something holding it together going from the wall to the TV. Or if you got extra patch cords, this is a good way to store them, is just put a zip tag on there, a zip lock. And so this is a great idea. This is better than a, um, a tie wrap. Uh, so the Velcro, it's not Velcro, I'm sorry, hook and loop, hook and loop. Velcro does not want you to call them Velcro. They want you to call them hook and loop because uh, of uh, issues with them. They just don't want it done. So uh, don't call them uh, Velcro. Call them hook and loop. That's what we sell. We sell hook and loop. Uh, and you can uh, order them on the website. The other thing is uh, HDMI. Uh, HDMI cables, they look a lot different if you're not familiar with them. Uh, we sell uh, professional grade uh, HDMI cables on our website. They are fantastic cables. They work absolutely great. Uh, they're uh, high speed and you got different types of levels of HDML. This is not a class on HDML, but you're going to need those for your TV. If you're running something from like a uh, computer system to your TV, and I do that. I know a lot of people don't do that. Just hook up the TV, they get it set up with Wi-Fi, and they just watch what's on the TV and what's on the smart TV. Well, you know what I got? I got a really small computer, so I, I hook up my uh, TV to uh, my computer, and then I'm able to surf the Internet, and I'm able to see different things that I'm interested in right there on my TV, sitting there in the living room. If I want to see some other uh, uh, stuff, I do a lot in YouTube, obviously, watching a lot of YouTube. And I also... Uh, download a lot of uh, news onto YouTube and then, then set it up in a uh, playlist and uh, watch the news for the day and then move on with life. But again, the same thing happens with HDMI cables. Don't just get the length that you measure. You have to have more cable than uh, the length that you measured. So that's my advice for HDMI. Um, there's some other uh, things. You get some of the other um, stuff for HDMI. This, of course, I've talked to in other uh, DIY uh, videos, um, and uh, this is a Keystone HDMI jack. So in the back, you would put your HDMI cable in there, and uh, then, of course, <clears throat> you, would, you would connect it into your... Uh, uh, let's see, I got this upside down, I think. You would connect this into your uh, uh, Keystone faceplate, and it just snaps right in. If I can get it snap in, it's not snapped in right. <laughs> it 
you know, it only happens on when you're recording something and you're trying not to do a lot of editing, but they snap in there and they snap in correct. This one isn't snapping in right. Um, let's see if I can find another one. Nope, I didn't bring out any. Anyway, they snap in there. Take my word for it. <laughs> the other thing is, sometimes you notice how far back this goes before you can start bending that cable? It goes quite a distance. And sometimes you can't fit that behind the wall. So what you do is you get one of these L brackets. And then you snip it, you clap it on there. And, uh, and that works pretty well. That works nice. And I use that in my home. Uh, to the back of uh, my TV when this is attached to a faceplate in the back of the TV. And that's where I use it. Okay, so... The last thing that I want to talk to you about, just buy one of these, man. Get these on Amazon. Uh, I'll, again, I'll put a link on it, but they're pretty, they're all over the place and they're labels. And so I could have labeled my jacks with that. In fact, I'm oh, not my jacks, my power supplies. So my light system here, see, I'm actually using right now the cam light battery charger. I actually described it and I put cam light bat charger right on here using this labeler right here and these are really convenient you should be using these labeler of course nothing wrong with that but I'm doing more and more of this type of labels also when you have your face plates on the wall you can put a little label underneath if you like now there's another way if you don't have a lot of face plates and you don't want to mess with that we sell these also these tapes and uh, there's different color tapes. Um, I don't know where's the edge. There's the edge. So, you know, you cut yourself a little square and you put that here and it identifies um, that jack that's in that hole or this, in this case, a coax that's in this uh, uh, faceplate. Now, if you, uh, one of my other videos, um, we talk about... Um, uh, uh, keystone jacks and how flexible they are how you can use them for many many different areas and I think I had this in one other video where all the uh, jacks there's the H HDMI uh, outlet and uh, of course the faceplate goes right over it like this and snaps and that's a little multi-use patch uh, panel uh, that you can trade out any of these at any time and just plug in your your patch cords. Now remember, if you're going to have patch cords and you're going to have this type of patch panel, uh, then what you need to do is uh, you need also to have uh, jumper cables or patch cords going from these ports to the proper location uh, at the other end. So you're going to need them from the TV and then you're going to need them from, um, you know, from the bottom of the wall uh, to the the things you want to plug into like your computer things like that So thank you for uh, the watching the video today again, please like it and subscribe um, I'm trying to build up my subscribers list and if you think this video has been worth you, your time and you learn something new and you think it's valuable would you please subscribe uh, uh, in the um, you know there in the channel so I can uh, uh, gain more subscriptions and more likes and also ring the bell. So every time I come out with a new video, you'll get notified. And again, this is Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com, and I hope you enjoyed the video. You have a great day. Bye.